Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're at. Welcome back. This is A Marvelous. And we're going to have another video about staged events. Today is November 20th, 2017. And um, Charles Manson just passed last night. So definitely this video is going to be um, real significant to the series. So once again, thank you for joining me. So this video, we're going to cover more staged events, um, but we're going to cover the scapegoats and patsies that's used to push the whole staged event narrative. So that's what this is about. Um, anytime you see an event, for the most part, especially if it involves um, a mass murderer or some kind of lone wolf narrative of someone doing something crazy, 10 to 1, that individual is a scapegoat or a program killer um, with actual program messages to go out and be triggered to do what he or she needs to do. And that's very important um, in staging an event because in order for an event to be passed off where it's believable, you have to have a narrative, which is a story to sell and for the public to believe. Um, once that narrative is crafted, sometimes it might be crafted um, after whatever it is that's about to be planned is planned, then they come up with some bogus narrative, some kind of fairy tale that's believable to the people because they know that most people will believe anything and they'll defend it as if it's a natural occurrence. Once that narrative is crafted, then they'll have someone that's a scapegoat or a patsy, someone that would be the face of evil um, to deflect it from actually being the real culprits, which is the government and whatever their agenda is and carrying out whatever act it is. So that's what this video is about. It's about this country's um, history of creating patsies and scapegoats in order to make the narrative believable. And Charles Manson's death is also very significant. Uh, assuming that he did die yesterday because we don't know when these people die for the most part, especially when you're dealing with national figures, um, especially when you're dealing with national figures of evil. Uh, if they're pretty much controlled by this country and they have an affiliation with this country of some sort, then we don't know when they die. We don't have access to things like that. We can only believe what we see in the media. So Charles Manson's passing is very important because he was the face of evil, um, the epitome of evil. And he was actually, this country deals with archetypes. Anytime you see something in the national headlines, any one person um, in the national headlines, that person is pushed heavily to be the face of evil. Because you have to ask yourself, pretty much every crime happens almost every day, period. There's an assortment of crimes, they happen all the time. Every crime happens every day. So the question has to become, what stands out certain crimes and criminals for it to be pushed nationwide? Murder happens every day. Um, mass murder in this country happens at a ridiculous rate, constantly. But what is it about certain types or certain news stories that make it to the media to where it's constantly pumped to us in our psyche? That's the question that has to be asked. And once you ask that question, you'll start to follow a trail or a connection of these individuals and how they have links to, like I said before, to the military, to the army, or to some bloodline that's responsible for controlling everything that we go through and everything that we see. And if you look at the history of individuals that have committed these great crimes, they have become archetypes. They have become national historical figures. Some of them have been praised no matter what evil they've been attributed to. And some of them have been completely demonized um, and they may or may not have done it. That is because this country has to have an archetype, kind of like a silhouette um, that can be inserted at any generation at any point in time that they can plug in as a face of evil. So if you strip away the name, if you strip away the person, it's actually a fill in the blank type of archetype that through generations, this country has been able to promote out there, so therefore it could be filled in by any type of narrative, 
whether it's the lone wolf um, mass murderer, whether it's the cult leader, um, whether it's the Islamic or foreign terrorist, some foreign boogeyman. Um, every president needs a boogeyman. So if you notice, it doesn't matter who it is. What matters is that we've been so conditioned um, to believe in fake boogeymans that it can be inserted with any time of archetype, race, now gender, um, nationality, religion, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that evil, right, has to be promoted constantly throughout generations on a regular basis to promote fear and to promote um, anxiety. And that's key to staging an event is that as long as you have this aura of fear, anybody can be inserted in it, even if it's unbelievable. Whether, because we know that most um, Caucasian males are the ones responsible for mass shootings, right? But because the narrative of evil is lingering in the shadows and could be used at any time to push a story, you might see a black man or you might see a woman that um, commits mass murder, mass murder, and next thing you know, even though you're shocked like the DC sniper, um, you'll get over it because the terror that was caused so-called by these individuals is so big that it overwhelms the disbelief that someone outside of the general archetype of what we believe this type of person to be um, can exist. So that's the one of the basic tenets of a staged event is constantly having um, this, this shadow of evil. And that's what the news is for. The news constantly sets up your paranoia and your fear. So it puts you on a heightened state of anxiety. So when something happens on a national level, any kind of person can be inserted as evil. And that's what Charles Manson represents also with other patsies. And if you look at Charles Manson, right? It said that Charles Manson was responsible for all of these, um, these killings back in the 60s, right? It said that he was a cult leader and he had the ability to convince his followers to do whatever he wanted. So he, it said, convinced his followers to kill a, a string of people back in the 60s. Now, when you want to identify a staged event, you have to really listen to the individuals that they're saying are evil. If you notice throughout history, um, whether it's from um, John Wilkes Booth to Lee Harvey Oswald to whoever it is, you will notice if you listen to them, they drop little clues to tell you that they're not working by themselves. And if you start to put the signs and symbols together, you'll start to see a pattern. Here's an example. Charles Manson, it's said, is part of what's called the Bundy bloodline, right? There's like a few bloodlines that's said to control everything. Some say it's 13. Who knows? We don't really have access to real records because real power is in secret. But it's said that it's 13. One of those bloodlines is the Bundy bloodline, right? A lot of people are supposed to be a part of that bloodline. Uh, I believe Jack the Ripper, Ted Bundy, um, things of that nature, Charles Manson. Anyway, um, so that in itself says he's that he's connected. Because a lot of these people, if they don't have military or police background, then they are a part of these bloodlines. And they have been traumatized from an early age to the point to where they don't even know what their history is. So when they carry out something, um, they have no idea where it came from. And that's why if you look at Charles Manson, he said, I didn't have a childhood. I didn't. He said, I was a pretty much a wanderer of this country. I didn't have a childhood. So a, a symbol of a patsy or a scapegoat, you always almost notice that their childhood is either obscured and blurry or they don't really have a clue who their biological father is. Or if you look up their history, their biological father is kind of sketchy, right? And it's not just true for scapegoats, it's true for presidents. You know what I mean? Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, um, it's true for athletes. So the whole narrative, the whole staged event thing is built on individuals that have a cloud over where they're born or who their biological father is. It almost never fails. 
And that could be linked to a lot of things, the kidnappings that you see, um, a lot of the abductions. A staged event happens because individuals have been traumatized and programmed to carry out a mission or they have been bred from youth to do something. So when they become adults, they've been so conditioned to do it that it's natural to them and they don't even know why they do it. But anyway, back to Manson. If you listen to Manson, everything, almost everything he's saying does not sound like someone that was accused of this. Now, there's no evidence um, that he was involved in any of this, right? He tried to defend himself and that didn't work out. But if you listen to Charles Manson and throughout the years and he's stuck consistent with this for like 40 years, Charles Manson has said that he's a reflection of this society. He's basically the dirt that was cast out and was thrown away, which means that he was the father of the underground, of what's dark, right? His name was Man's Son, which is, his real name was Maddox, but Man's Son is his name. So he was Man's Son. He represented all of the filth of this country, and he said he was okay with that. And he said all the children in the world that have been dejected and rejected, he takes, right? But he doesn't take them to corrupt them, according to his words. He takes them to fight back against those individuals talking about this country who he called um, satanic and devilish, ironically. Um, and he protects them from being corrupted. Now, you're talking about a person who was adamant about treating the environment right, talking about going to the mountains and making sure that the water is clean, right? You're talking about a person that said people in jail are products of the outside world and they need to be um, healed. But instead of healing it, the people inside the jails and prisons make them worse. So if you listen to Manson, this is a person that does not reflect the narrative of evil that was promoted in the media. So if there's no evidence against him and what he's accused of, right? You have a person talking about treating the environment right and making sure the children of this world um, have a future, but they won't have a future because they're being poisoned and killed off. You're talking about a person that is saying that the people in prison need to be healed, but instead of healing it, um, you make them worse. You're talking about a person, and I'm just saying this to give an example of this is a pattern amongst individuals that's promoted as evil. If you listen to them, they almost always have insight into what this country does. And then there's always a link to them and this country of some sort, which means that they are a product of what this country creates. But when this country is done with them and they carry out their mission, they demonize them. That's how you know that these events are not what they seem. But in terms of Manson, he was adamant about fixing the environment. Now, some people could say that's a con, that's a scam. So then let's just look deeper at what Manson represents. And then you can apply this formula to patsies and scapegoats or individuals that were seen as evil before, whether it's Saddam Hussein, um, Osama bin Laden, um, Muammar Gaddafi. It doesn't matter. Whoever was demonized in this country or was said to have killed someone or attempted to kill someone, you will see a link to this country. You will see that they have worked with this country, they've been affiliated with this government, and then when you read the symbols of what they've done, you'll see that they have a connection to other people who were not being demonized. Charles Manson, I'm using right now, A, because he died, and then B, because he represents the archetype of evil, right? Just like Hitler is used as the archetype of evil, even though he killed less people than Stalin, um, killed less people than a lot of dictators, Hitler is still the face of evil, right? Just like Charles Manson. So Charles Manson dying signifies a letting go of the past and a whole new wave of elite serial killers um, that's descended from the 60s, the whole 60s wave of ritual assassinations, Charles Manson dying represents a passing of the torch of what this country is going to keep doing, but do on a higher level. And he's just the archetype of it. So now everyone you see is kind of going to be like Charles Manson's ghost in the media 
when it comes to being a patsy or a scapegoat. Now, here's the symbolism. Anytime you see a face of evil, you have to ask yourself, okay, are they really a lone wolf? Are they really acting on their own accord? And almost always they are not. You will see that they are affiliated with this country in some form or fashion and affiliated with other people um, that either might be famous or other people that have been affiliated with evil. They have some affiliation and it almost always links back to Hollywood or this country. Now, here's the symbology of that. Charles Manson is connected to someone called Roman Polanski, right? Now, Roman Polanski, if you notice now, you have all this Hollywood stuff coming out. Um, pedophiles and the casting couch and women in Hollywood coming out saying that these other powerful figures in Hollywood have uh, made it unwanted advances to them, um, pretty much violating them sexually, right? That's the wave now. This is something you have to ask yourself, why now? If this is something that's been a Hollywood secret for so long. Why are we hearing about it right now? It doesn't make sense. It only makes sense if you look at the signs and you'll see that the narrative is what has to be bought into for a particular reason as a distraction and to control perception. But Charles Manson is connected to someone by Roman Polanski because one of the Manson murders was of a person called Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate was married to Roman Polanski. Now, who was Roman Polanski? Anytime from now on, or even in the past 40 years, when you see stories of Hollywood, molestation, pedophilia, um, sexual harassment, anything like you see now with Kevin Spacey and Dustin Hoffman and all these people, Harvey Weinstein, all of that is Roman Polanski's ghost, right? This has been going on in Hollywood forever, but Roman Polanski is the face of evil when it comes to sexual harassment um, raped a 13 year old girl, right? Um, didn't get pretty much any jail time and got a standing ovation at the Oscars, I think in 2003 for a movie he directed because he won the Oscar. So this Hollywood figure, who's a big time figure, raped a 13 year old girl, fled the country after doing it. He did it at Jack Nicholson's house, by the way, barely got any jail time, right? And then they gave him an Oscar 30 years later. And he got a standing ovation from his Hollywood peers, people that are very famous. So that represents Hollywood not only knowing about the sick shit that goes on in the country, in Hollywood, but also applauding a figure that is known to have raped a 13-year-old girl. So the individuals, a lot of the individuals you see now, like Harvey Weinstein or even Woody Allen, who has his own issues with that, they constantly defended um, Roman Polanski and said that he was being treated unfairly. So pedophilia, rape, and molestation is the name of the game in Hollywood, and Roman Polanski is that father figure of this family tree where all of Hollywood descends when it comes to this sick behavior um, in this industry. So Charles Manson, um, it is said, was responsible for the murder of Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate. Now that's the connection. You see, and anytime you see these patsies, you're gonna see at least a three degrees of separation between this country and famous figures. It never fails. But what's significant about this and why you can always tell that these events are staged and things are put in the media just for perception is that there was a movie called, there was a book and a movie called Rosemary's Baby. I used to watch stuff like that, Poltergeist and all of these things when I was younger. Really had no clue what these things meant. The Shining, which is a movie about pedophilia. But Rosemary's Baby was a book that came out in the um, mid to late 60s, right? And then a movie was made on the book by Roman Polanski. So Roman Polanski made a movie about the book Rosemary's Baby. Now what's Rosemary's Baby's about? I'm going to show you how these things are symbolic. You have Charles Manson, the face of evil for serial killing, which he really, by definition, wasn't a serial killer. But you have the face of evil when it comes to serial killing. You have the face of evil when it comes to pedophilia and rape, right? And 
you're going to see how these archetypes are interwoven with each other, but how one archetype was demonized and how another archetype was praised because one archetype doesn't fit the continued narrative of being positive when an agenda has to be pushed by this country. That's in Charles Manson. But the other narrative of um, Roman Polanski being the, the evil of rape and pedophilia is promoted and propped up because that is what this country, the people that run this country, and that's what Hollywood continues to do. It serves their purpose. So if that's exposed, then um, their whole world will collapse. So one evil is, pro is demonized, another evil is, pro is promoted. But those evils are connected to each other. So Rosemary's Baby um, is about a couple um, and the husband, it's been a while since I've seen it, but the husband is looking to be like an inspiring actor or something like that. So they move to this town or whatever, um, start again so they can, he can get his career off. So they meet their neighbors and all that. Fast forward, the neighbors tell them that either the neighborhood or the house, um, you know, is basically a place of witchcraft place of Satanism and that they need to be careful. So they brush it off and things of that nature. But as time goes on, strange things start to happen. And the next thing you know, the wife is starting to see things and experience things, experience things that she's seeing as not kosher. Next thing you know, they're um, attacking her. Now she's pregnant and come to find out they want her baby because um, they have to have this baby as a sacrifice for witchcraft and Satanism in order for them, these are the neighbors and the people in that place, in order for them to get to the next level and be favorable to Satan. As it turns out, spoiler alert, um, the baby that this woman is carrying um, was Satan's child itself. It was Satan's seed, Satan's spawn. So they wanted this baby as the highest order of power to give to Satan is a high form of witchcraft and Satanism. So the Rosemary book and the Rosemary movie was about Satanism, witchcraft, sacrificing babies, and pretty much ritual murder, right? Why is that significant is because Sharon Tate, the wife of Roman Polanski, was pregnant. And it was no secret that she, Roman Polanski, they were into that. They were into witchcraft. They was into the occult. And... Come to find out, Sharon Tate no longer wanted that because she was having a baby, so she wanted out. As she was being more vocal about separating from Roman Polanski, she winds up dead. Now, it's said that Roman Polanski, right, who was out the country, um, actually orchestrated this hit along with Charles, and Charles Manson was one of the hitters that was supposed to carry it out. With that said, you see the connection in Hollywood because... The book and the movie came out a year or two or three before Sharon Tate died. Book movie comes out. Roman Polanski does the book, which mirrors his life, leaves the country. Charles Manson is alleged of killing Sharon Tate. So you have Charles Manson, who's allegedly a part of this bloodline, the Bundy bloodline. You have Roman Polanski, who is known to be doing involved in witchcraft and Satanism. Married to Sharon Tate, who's pregnant, gets killed in a ritualistic way by someone known to be a part of Satanism and conducting ritual murders. All of this is a perceptions thing because the 60s was the time when all of these ritual murders was put on a national level. So anytime you see something like that, you have to look at the connections to these people that they're saying is evil. And if you look at the connections, you'll start to see a narrative that plays out and you'll start to see that there's a whole nother section of people that these evil people are connected to that don't get any prosecution. To this day, Roman Polanski has not seen that much jail time for what he did and has been constantly trying to get pardoned for what he did decades ago. Still. So you have to look at that. So why would a person that's talking about um, fixing the environment, had an organization called ATWA, right? Air, trees, water, and animals to correct the animal, to correct the environment, clean the water up, save the children, save the animals, 
be demonized as evil. Something doesn't make sense. So this is the MO of a staged event is the patsy and the scapegoat. But if you listen to the words of these people, the James O. Rays, the Lee Harvey Oswalds, you will start to see a lot of them profess their innocence. Some people will say, well, that's what criminals do. However, in almost all of these circumstances, you'll see other people that's not connected to the situation at all come out with concrete evidence that these individuals um, are not what they're made out to be. Another example of that is in the Martin Luther King assassination, right? If you notice, um, there were certain individuals that stood to benefit and had a hand in Martin Luther King's assassination. Jesse Jackson, right, um, is one of those people. But James O. Ray was supposedly the culprit. Now, he died, and if you see the Lorraine Hotel, you see the symbolism of Lorraine. All of these things have symbolism. So when you're looking at who is accused of being evil, you have to look again like the names and the dates, and you have to look at the other people involved. And almost always, the other people that's involved either get promoted, um, they get rewarded, and they don't get any penalty at all. And then you have others that just die out or they get arrested. Anytime you see that, that's also a symbol that these things are orchestrated and that these things are um, not what they appear to be. So Charles Manson is, is very significant in terms of his death because it's representing a whole new um, releasing of the past. And it's also representing that there's going to be a whole new generation of elite serial killers that are going to be um, continuous. They're going to be born. But you have to strip the narrative of evil and flip it. Not saying that this man was a saint, not saying that he should be praised. I'm saying that you need to listen to what he's been saying. And you need to listen. Whoever they're saying is evil, go back and trace what they were into before. Go back and see if you can listen or find anything in terms of the words that they were saying and then find their connections. And it's almost always never... Um, a matter of just them being crazy. Almost never. There's always a connection. They were either trained to do it or in Charles Manson's case, he said, you looking at me as evil is a narrative that you created. He said the people that you work for talking to the journalists, they're the evil ones. They're the demonic ones. So you have a person that's claiming this for 40 years and said, I don't mind being in jail. It's actually uh, healing me. It's actually helping me. This is a person that knows something. And this is a person that has been kept down. I'm not saying he's a victim. Just saying that he's an archetype. Strip away what they tell us is evil. Strip away what we see in the media and ask, why are we seeing these individuals? Why is this person evil? And if you do it, you'll see a three degrees of separation. Roman Polanski is still walking around, haven't been penalized, but Charles Manson got 40, got, what, nine life sentences? Something is off with that, but yet they're connected, right? So there's a reason for that. You got two archetypes of evil, right? One wasn't persecuted, the other one was demonized, but yet they have a link and they have a connection, and that's Hollywood and that's this government. Anytime you see that, that means that there's a patsy, there's a scapegoat narrative that has to be pushed. So, in closing, remember, you have to look at the narrative. And you have to look at the timing of him dying. You talk about a Scorpio, right? Charles Manson, that died during Scorpio, during New Moon in Scorpio, which is the most transformative moon in 2017. So, even if he didn't die when they said he did yesterday, November 19th, the releasing of it, whether it happened or not, or the occurrence of it during this time is a, is a symbolic thing. It's showing that the past is now officially being buried and in the past and that a new thing is coming about. And this new perpetual cycle of elite serial killers is going to continue. Um, it's going to constantly be pushed and the advanced narrative and the sophistication of these trained elite serial killers 
is going to constantly be stepped up at such a high level that it's going to be harder for us to think that these things are not they're not staged. But that's why you have to put the symbols. Like Charles Manson with the book, this is not just him. It could happen with any Patsy, any future serial killer. You're going to be able to put the signs and symbols to it and see that there's a story behind everyone that they say is evil. And when you look at that story, whether it's Stephen Paddock in Vegas, it doesn't matter. There's a narrative, there's a connection, and there's always, always going to be a opposing evil figure that does not get persecuted, and you won't see that much from them. So with that, thank you for joining me. I uh, look forward to hearing from y'all again. Please leave your comment and your feedback. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and that's that. Peace.